Just a reminder, if you have a question, you can post uh, in the chat and we'll unmute your line. Coach Hill? All right, good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody. Tell the truth Monday. Team positive. I thought our defense played its best game the whole year. Holding Texas A&M to 13 points, tremendous job. I hold them to 267 yards total offense, their lowest uh, output of the, of the season. They were 2 of 16 on third downs. We've been phenomenal on third downs the last two games uh, on defense. And I thought that turnover on fourth and one was an excellent play. It was an excellent effort play. I watched it about 20 times and was uh, turned the uh, outcome of the game. It was, it was about to go up 17 points and uh, just a tremendous effort by defense. On offense, number one, the scheme has to be better. I watched the film yesterday. Uh, we need to put our bet players in better positions, call better plays and have answers to their blitzes. They had too many free blitzers uh, hitting our young quarterbacks. Then our execution has to be better. It starts with pass pro and run blocking. Uh, we did not control their front. We did not control their blitzes. Uh, we watched that yesterday. We identified what went wrong, and we came up with a lot of solutions. So there's, today's going to be a big day on fixing what went wrong on offense. Two turnovers, obviously, were, uh, were minus three in the turnover battle. We had a turnover. On special teams, special teams did not play his best game. Uh, we had a missed field goal. We had four penalties, and then Zach was running for his life back there. And thank God he's athletic. Uh, he avoided a couple of uh, block punts, so I thought Zach did a, a tremendous job of getting us out of trouble. Uh, Terrence Marshall opted out. Uh, Terrence has done a, been a great LSU Tiger for us. It was in a heated battle for him. He was the number one wide receiver in the state of Louisiana. He was a must get, a great family from Shreveport, Louisiana. So we wish him the very best. And I know he's gonna have a great career in the NFL and, and he's always gonna be a great Tiger. And uh, he did a lot of things for us. Uh, gave us seven games, had 10 receptions, had his best game, and he just thought this was the time to opt out. So we're gonna respect his decision and wish him the best. Uh, today is gonna be about fixing LSU and a little bit about Alabama. Uh, and then tomorrow we're going to move on to Alabama with a scouting report and, and, and get ready for them. But we practice Alabama, it seems like, for now for the third week. So we kind of know them uh, very well. Uh, obviously a great football team, a great football coach, led by their offense, 48 points a game. Mac Jones is having a tremendous year. Najee Harris is going to be the best back we see uh, all year. Devontae Smith is an outstanding player, 72 reception. They do a great job. Sarkeesian does a great job of getting him the ball and probably the best offensive line that we'll see all year. It's going to be a tremendous challenge, but we're looking forward to playing Alabama. I hope we have a great crowd there, as many as we possibly can, and it'll be a wonderful night for the Tigers. Any questions? Hey, Coach, good morning. You touched on Terrace. I, I have some questions related to ops out and transfers and all those things. But the, first off, did Terrace talk to you about it, about his decision? You kind of alluded to you know, why maybe the timing was right. Secondly, this season, when it started, we all knew it was going to be different. Did you have to adjust your mindset, as you like to say, set your jaw for a different, you know, scenario with these kids that, that, that yeah. they opt out in the midseason? There may still be more to come. You, know, you kind of yeah. have to understand, I guess, and kind of yeah. smile through your teeth for them. Yeah. Well, first of all, Terrence did come talk to me yesterday morning, uh, like a man. Terrence and I have a great relationship. You know, uh, I play with his uncle Joe Delaney, and he and I talk about Joe all the time, and uh, so. You know, it was a little different between a uh, player and a coach between me and Terrence, almost like family. So he came talk to me like a man. He explained his decision. I respected his decision. And yes, this is a different time. You know, be able to, you know, like Jamar Chase hopping out, Terrence Marshall, two of the best receivers in the country, um, Tyler Shevin. You just got to deal with it. It's something you got to deal with. Next man up. But we've got a lot of young guys that are getting to play now. They're excited. And I think this is going to help us in the future. Hey, Coach, uh, Ryan Hennessy, I'm at the NBC in Birmingham. Uh, I just got off the Zoom with Coach Saban. He's still at home uh, recovering from COVID, but he said he plans on being back for the game against you guys. What kind of challenges does that bring you with Coach Saban on the sidelines compared to him, let's say, coaching from, I guess, from home? Well, you know, he's a great coach. I mean, look at what he's done. And he's do, done a fantastic job with his football team. Uh, you can see the same traits in and out with his football team. Uh, execution, great players, great coaches, great plays. Uh, I think that uh, the guy's done a tremendous job with his program.
Coach, uh, I, I w will assume that y'all sent the uh, Keyshawn Boutte call that was reversed to the SEC. Uh, what, what was your interpretation of it, and did, have you, did you get a response from them about, about that call being reversed? Yeah, we didn't get a response back, but we definitely sent it back, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll see what they say. Did you think it was – you can you say whether you have yeah, an about it? Yeah, sure. I thought it was a touchdown. <laughs> no question. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you talked about uh, kind of preparing for this year with all the ops out, the possibilities. Um, kind of two questions. The, the second, you know, won't be related to this, but I'm curious. As the season continues, do you, do you expect more players to follow or – how do you approach that talking to the team in the wake of this? Yeah, that has not been discussed with anybody else. Uh, I haven't heard anything. Uh, the first time I heard about Terrence opting out was Sunday morning. Uh, he had a tremendous game. Uh, but, you know, we're going to take it day by day. Uh, I mean, other players can't opt out. That's the rule. Uh, nobody has talked to me about it. But, you know, again, we'll take it day by day and see. And and you had the – you talked about protection, offensive line, and working a lot about that today, you said. I mean – is it at all similar to the frustrations you had a couple of years ago in 2018 where you just had to bring other people in to protect and uh, it limits you a bit? And I remember you all talked a little bit about spreading out, mm -hmm. allowed you all to give the quarterback less pressure sometimes. Yeah. Those just almost seemed like yeah. counterintuitive. But I'm wondering, does it is it at all similar to that and yeah. how are you all finding the answers? to? Well, you know, we, we like to spread. And we like to keep one back in for protection, but we also like to empty it out because you get, get rid of the ball quick. Uh, what happened in this game wasn't the amount of people that were blocking, it was how we were blocking. And uh, they were overloaded one side and we turned away from it and those guys came. And uh, that's just scheme. It's something that we can fix. Uh, it wasn't about bringing extra people into the protection. We like to get as many people as we can out we had enough people in protection, but we just wasn't sliding it the right way. Hey, Coach, good morning. A um, couple quick questions for you, if I can. Um, last year, obviously, everything's hunky-dory. Couldn't have been better. <laughs> I like that. This year, <laughs> this year, obviously, it's been challenging. You, the face of the program, the head coach, where is this program heading, Coach? I mean, and, and yeah. where is the light at the end of this kind of dark 2020? Yeah. Yeah. We built a championship program. And we will be champions again. Uh, recruiting is going well. We got some great young players. Uh, we have some stuff that we have to get fixed, I, and I know we have to fix it. But I've done it before, and I'll do it again. And coach, I know you're big on culture. Uh, Pete Carroll, your mentor, has talked to you about all that. Do you feel good about the culture uh, inside your building right you now? Yeah, I, I feel good about what we built here over uh, over my length as the head coach. I think that we have some things to work on. We have some leadership things to work on. I have some things to work on to get better. But overall, I think we built a great culture inside the building. Uh, this year has been a challenge, obviously, with COVID-19, uh, other stuff going on, and has, has uh, kind of put a, a little spin on everything. Uh, you know, you don't know what the next guy is going to opt out, who's opt out. But I think that overall that we've built a good culture here, and we have a good young foundation. Thank you. Hey, Coach, you know, obviously with, with Paris gone, you can't replace that production that he gave you guys, but just who are some people or some players that you're hoping can step up in his yeah. absence and kind of take over as kind yeah. of the next in line for you? you know, I'd like, I like us to get Eric Gilbert the ball more. I think Eric Gilbert is, is an outstanding player. Uh, we can move him out to a receiver position. Uh, John Trey Kirkland sitting in the wings. Uh, hopefully we can get Trey Palmer back. I don't think Racy McMax is going to be back this week. And then we have two great young receivers and um, Keshawn Boutte and Carl Moore. So we have a lot of guys that are hungry to catch the ball, and I think the next man up is going to prove that they're very good receivers. Hey, Coach, um, did did Terrace now that Terrace is gone? Did did he have COVID earlier in the season, or does he have it now? No, I don't. I can't. I can't comment on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got you. And I also wanted to ask you. Um, Considering the, the speech Terrace made to the players about yeah. sticking into the season a couple of weeks ago, how do you think now that he's left? What do you think the players think of that, and what do you think? About it? 
You know, I, I think it's something we got to deal with. Obviously, uh, he had a change of heart. Had a, uh, I, I thought when he said it, he met it, and uh, the team believed him. Uh, I think that uh, obviously he had a change of heart. Uh, you never can tell what goes on, Glenn, with with, with uh, guys uh, when they talk with their families or people that they talk to, and they make personal decisions. And I think this was a strictly a business decision for Terrence. I can't speak for him. Let him speak for it. But again, we support him, and uh, he was, he'd been a great LSU Tiger for us. Ed, you talked about the challenges of this season. Um, you know, I look at, at you guys or a team like Penn State or maybe Louisville, for example, that, that were coming off solid years last year and uh, have certainly not lived up to those expectations this year. How much of that do you think is, is related to the challenges specifically of 2020 and COVID? And, and do you? While there's the upside of guys getting reps and playing and, and continuing to build that culture, do you worry about damage done to, um, you know, the culture or the brand or anything like that by having a season that, that is underwhelming? I guess. Well, you, you always got to re represent LSU with pride, and uh, the stand the standard performance here is very high. We have not met that, okay? But you know what? I'm not gonna make any excuses for COVID. I'm not gonna make any excuses for young players. Uh, we just got to get the job done. There's a lot of factors that came into this year. I think the biggest thing was the loss of all those great players. And you can look at, at the NFL today, and they're dominating the NFL. You want to know why we had a good team? Look at the players that we lost. And now we have some young players that I think are going to be just as good, but they're just not there yet. Hey, hey Ed, it's Ed, New Orleans. Um, what do you plan to do if you can say uh, sorry about your quarterback position this week? Do you yeah. plan to settle on one, or will you play two, and when will you make that decision? Well, we're going to see uh, the game plan throughout the week. You know, it was the surface was wet. We thought that uh, the only reason we pulled TJ was to put Max in and to try some quarterback runs, and we had planned that all week, and we thought that we could get that done, but it, we, we couldn't. So we're going to see this week. We're going to practice both of them, and then we're going to make that decision at the end of the week according to the game plan and what we, what we need to get done on offense. Hey, Ed, obviously you gave that explanation about the offensive line and what you kind of think was going on. But just to kind of understand better, do you think they were mistakes or do you think it's just something you guys have to change with how you're scheming? I think it was both, both of them. First of all, you got to look at scheme. I mean, we – we did not have them in the right position a lot of the times, and there were some free blitzers coming in. So um, the way we turn the protection, the way we protect, uh, those things uh, can be fixed easily, and it's things that we have done before. Now, there was a couple of times where we got beat one-on-one, -on -one, and we got to have better technique, and we got to play better and compete better. So it was a combination of both. Hey, Coach, you mentioned uh, Kayshawn and Coy as a couple of guys that you'd like to see more of down the stretch. Where are those two freshman receivers in terms of their development and just how how ready do you feel like they are or what are some things you need to see from yeah. them to take on that big role the rest of the way? Yeah, I think they're ready to play. I think they're ready to play and will play well. Obviously, there's some things that they need to walk, work on. Obviously, COVID guys are getting uh, quarantined, not being in practice for a couple of weeks and missing, missing some time has hurt them a little bit. But I think overall, both those guys have demonstrated in practice they're ready to play. Uh, hey, Coach. Shea Dixon with 24-7. Um, you, each week you had talked about things you wanted to see cleaned up on defense. I assume that list was shorter after the weekend. Uh, what was key for them You know, when you saw yeah. the film again and, and during the yeah. of the game? Simplification, communication, the things that we've been working on, having their cliques in the grass. I think the biggest thing that came out of the game was no explosive passes, and uh, that was a big improvement for us. We had some explosive runs, but we didn't have mistakes where guys were running free uh, down there scoring touchdowns. We, I thought our man-to-man -man coverage was great. I thought our plan was great. I thought our defensive line played very well against a very good offensive line. We tackled well. Our linebackers got to the football. Uh, we missed a couple of fits on the counter plays on the big plays. But to hold him for 13 points and 267 yards was a great uh, output by defense. Hey, Ed, uh, staying sort of on that theme of sort of defensive improvement, you mentioned third down earlier. How have y'all made that such a you – know, how have y'all improved so much in that area over the last two weeks after struggling in that? Yo, four-man rush, four-man rush and great coverage. 
Uh, it all works together. It all starts with a four-man rush and tight coverage. Uh, the quarterback doesn't have a long time to throw the ball, and he doesn't have many windows to throw the ball. We had some good pressure on the quarterback, and then we had some five-man rushes, and we had some blitzes, and our man-to-man -man coverage was pretty good. Coach, Brett, what does it mean to you um, when you consider all the criticism that um, Coach Bellini has been under this year to see the defense improve as dramatically as they did last week? And yeah. How much of it do you think is Coach Bellini adapting to his players or, or, or them kind of figuring out what he's been trying to teach all along? I think it's a combination of both, you know, Brett. And then, you know, with the criticism, that's outside noise. We can't react to that. You know, we got to control our own mindset within the building. And you know, we got to believe in each other. We got to fight for each other. One team, one heartbeat. It's coaching staff, players together. But I do believe it's a combination of both learning what our players can and can't do and our players understanding the scheme better. And you can see it working. Coach, I know that this year you've talked about getting to that championship apex, especially tasting it last year. But removing COVID from this season, with this type of adversity in 2020, do you need a season like this to get to that championship pedigree again? You know, Matt, I think that you need to uh, build uh, grit within a football team. I think you need to be tough, build toughness, and the young guys need to learn how to go out there and play and win. But we need to coach them better. So I think it's a combination. Nobody wants to go through a season like this, but I do believe we're building character and grit, and it's going to pay off for us later on. Coach Scooter Hobbs, back to the terrorist speech again. Uh, are you all concerned about what that what that will do to the, for the morale of the team? You know, Scooter, it's something we can't control. I mean, um, that's something that happened last week. I never thought this would happen this week, but you know what? We got to deal with it. Uh, this is a year that we've had to deal with a lot of stuff, and uh, you just got to be ready to go and just stay positive with the football team. I think the team is going to look at it and say, okay, Terrence is going, next man up, let's go, we're fighting. I think the thing that you saw against Texas A&M was fight on this football team, the will to win and to compete, and uh, our guys have that, and I'm proud of them for that. Hey, Coach Joe, uh, two-part question. First of all, defensively, uh, with the exception of two runs, you really kept Spiller you know, in check. Mm -hmm. Um, probably a lot of tackles for losses are at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Can you relate the, the challenge that faces your defense this week with Najee yeah. Harris and a much bigger back yeah. and a guy who's obviously very capable of catching the ball in yeah. the backfield? Yeah, no question. Well, first of all, they have they run a little different scheme. Uh, this is the best offensive line we've seen coming to Tiger Stadium in years, and it, this is going to be a challenge. And one of the best running backs, and he's very physical. Uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, the margin of error is going to be very small. We have to play well up front. We have to tackle. And we have to eliminate the explosive play. The second part, uh, I'm not sure the greater challenge, not know if that's only your coaching job this week, but you the motivator. You mentioned you know, the outside noise and, and uh, how you try to keep your, your kids looking ahead. Uh, yeah. And not listen to uh, you know four point uh, four touchdown underdogs or what kind of thing like yeah. like versus Goliath kind of thing. You know we we never we never talk about that. that, that that's never been mentioned. And uh, this is Alabama, this is LSU Alabama. But it's about us. We can control. We can control. Let's go in there. Let's play our best game that we possibly can play. Hey, good afternoon, Matt Lascona. Uh, maybe this is a little on the same lines, but I have two if I could. Normally, when you're playing Alabama. At where it falls on the calendar, there is still a championship on the line. Yeah, and there isn't that now. So, what do you tell your team this week? And then the other, if I could, um, after watching the film, how did you grade out the quarterbacks? And, and were there differences that you saw in film than maybe what you thought you saw? Mm -hmm. time? Well, the quarterbacks were under the rest. <laughs> I mean, so you know, I. I I can't put anything on those young quarterbacks. I thought they did the best that they could. Not nah, they made some mistakes, they made some misreads, but when there's free britches and they're attacking them all that, and that uh, and the young freshman quarterback, I got to put all the blame. We got to have a better scheme, number one. And then uh, what I tell this week, we play tell the team this week, we play in Alabama at home. <laughs> That's all we need to hear. And uh, playing Alabama is a great rivalry for us. It's been, been, a, been a great game over the years for us, a tremendous challenge. 
the number one team in the country, coming to Tiger Stadium. Let's play. Hey, Coach, Steve Moulton, WZZN. I've got two, please. Uh, you, you mentioned about limiting the explosive plays and coming off your best game defensively. What goes into, especially with the, the kind of high caliber speed that Alabama does have, yeah. and limiting those explosive plays? Yeah, you, you got to find where Devontae Smith is, number one. You got to know where he's at, where, what's he going to do, and you have to cover him. And uh, you may have to double cover him, you may not. But uh, if, if we do have single coverage, we have guys that can single coverage, you, you got to be able to eliminate him from getting the ball over the top. There, uh, Sarkeesian does a good job with his play action pass, or called gap pass, and take shots. He'll take shots uh, time after time. And you can't get your safeties too far up to play the run because they throw the ball over your head. I think that's the number one deal. What was your second question, Steve? Uh, a second question is, uh, since this game is kind of a rescheduled, if you were to look back at your team when you were supposed to play Alabama, do you think your team is better today than when you were supposed to play Alabama? Yeah, we have enough people to play. We don't, we'd have played them the first week. We just didn't have enough people to play. And that's, that's all that was to it. And uh, so I'm glad we played them. Uh, I'm glad we got to reschedule. We look forward to playing them. you wanted to have the spread offense, but in the SEC, everyone has it now, and you're about to face two yeah. really good offenses the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, do you feel like these quarterbacks that have come along, you know, so long the SEC was knocked for having no quarterback play, do you feel like their production is a direct result of the spread, and like you've said before, seven on seven? Yes, no question. No question. And it puts athletes in space and let them make plays. And uh, the people are scoring a lot of points. And... Uh, the quarterbacks are, are being groomed in the seven-on-seven seven league. Uh, they're going in there. It's quick. It's a shotgun, getting the ball, throwing the ball, throwing it deep. And then again, when you have some great athletes like they have to give the ball, you know, you have success. Hey, I have two questions. Uh, first off, I mean, how much was not being able to get a push in the run game, you know, not having Tory Carter available and yeah. what's his status coming back and is there kind of more in that position now this week? Yeah, well? yeah. Tory, Tory's uh, will not be available this week. Uh, you know, at fourth and one, you know, uh, we go hurry up and uh, we got beat in the line of scrimmage and that was a big play in the ball game. And then, you know, we're trying to run the leads inside. There was no room to run it. We got to be more creative. We got to get the ball outside and we got to block better. I mean, it feels like this is the longest and strangest buildup to Alabama that I've seen for a while, like a couple of weeks. I mean, what's what's been kind of behind the scenes? You know, you've said you've wanted to play this game. And yeah. How did y'all talk about it? I know you had other games to look at, but in the buildup sense, how did y'all approach towards this? You know, it's about LSU. Uh, Al Alabama's a great team and a great program. And uh, this is about us, about our, us getting our team ready to play a great a great game and doing the best that we possibly can. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Go Tigers.